Hello, Juliana. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Hello. Thanks a lot for accepting the invitation. Looking forward to talk to you as Embraer is our great partner and we have also you sponsoring our aviation quiz in our upcoming event, Aviate Europe Summer Briefing, with fantastic models of the E2, the Profit Hunter. So really looking forward to that. But first, as we usually do, let's start with your personal aviation journey. When did it start? Why did it start? And how did you make it to your current role at Embraer? Okay, thank you so much first for the invitation, Yurai. So it's a pleasure for me to be here talking about the two. And so we're starting about my career, right? So I'm an aeronautical, aeronautical engineer. So I graduated about uh, 10 years ago. And after my graduation, I joined Embraer as, um, and I started working at Embraer 10 years ago in the flight operations department. So I started my career working with uh, uh, let's say the procedures for pilots. So I was responsible for writing the publications, the AFM, AOM, SOPs, and so on. I worked also with um, uh, aircraft performance. So I was responsible for testing and uh, um, just generating the performance data that uh, is used by the airlines in the performance calculation for the routes. Um, after that, I spent about one year in Azul. Uh, so there I could uh, have more experience about the airline environment. I worked there as an Embraer employee. So it's, it, it was a kind of an exchange program. So between Embraer and Azul. So for me, it was really good to be part of Azul flight operations the department, uh, just helping them to implement new procedures. They were doing some uh, few uh, savings um, activities there. So it, it was really uh, nice to have this experience there. After that, yeah, I came sounds, back to Embraer. Sounds very interesting. And obviously, the founder of Azul is now, uh, David Nealman, he's now founded a new airline in the US, which is also supported very much by Embraer. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And, they, and, and uh, during this opportunity at Azul, I, I, had, um, I could meet uh, David there. So we used to have lunch together. He's a really nice guy. I, 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 Amazing. It was a really nice opportunity. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, uh, and this help, helped me a lot in my career. Uh, after that, I just came back to, to Embraer again, uh, working in flight operations, giving support to airlines all over the world. Uh, I worked a lot with um, our customers in the US, uh, just like um, Republic, SkyWest, and so on. And after five years working in flight operations, I just decided to move. Um, and I went to work in marketing intelligence. So this was in the beginning of 2016, uh, just before uh, the first flight of the 192. So uh, for me, it was really good because I spent um, around four, uh, almost four years in market intelligence during the development and the certification of the E2 family. So uh, it was good to participate in the beginning of the first E2 campaigns, uh, just like um, Azul campaign or um, KOM, Helvetic and so on, and just giving support to all the sales offices around the world. And uh, it was good also to participate of the certification of the two, the market requirements, product, uh, product um, requirements, and so on. So this was a really nice opportunity. And so after working these um, around four years in market intelligence, I just decided to move again. And I had this opportunity to come to one of our uh, sales offices. And now I'm based here in Amsterdam. Um, I'm today um, a market manager for uh, part of Europe. So I work together with our sales directors here, just uh, with the sales strategy, the analysis of products, uh, analysis for IRFIs, IRFPs that we have with our customers here um, in Europe. I know it's a, probably a very difficult question, but can you say which part of your journey was the most enjoyable? Uh, it's really <laughs> difficult to say. I think that uh, it's a kind of, I believe that one complements the other. So mm -hmm. uh, um, for sure, I use all of the knowledge that I got in flight operations today. So uh, I really like to do, I don't know, performance calculations. Uh, and for me, it's, uh, it's more natural. Uh, because of all of the knowledge that I um, that I could get in the beginning of my career in flight operations, I really like to talk about operations. I like to have conversations with pilots, with uh, 
uh, flight operations engineers. And I think that this background helps me in these uh, conversations with airlines. So um, I know um, uh, what they wanted to hear when they make some types of questions uh, regarding day two, for, for example. So uh, for me, it's natural to open the manual and talk um, uh, about it uh, with more deep in details uh, with them. So. But uh, talking about one specific moment in my career, it's, it, it's difficult. Maybe what I could mention is the was being at Embraer in the first flight of the 192. So the, it's a moment that uh, I think that for all, all employees at Embraer, it's, um, it's, it's amazing. So everybody goes close to the runway. Uh, we wait for the airplane uh, just uh, come to the... Uh, taxiway and uh, we wait and as soon as the, the, the airplane takes off everybody celebrates everybody stays there until the, the, the airplane comes back off the, the first flight so it's a really I don't know emotional moment so this for me uh, I believe that until, until today was one of the um, I don't know biggest point of my career. I saw a video from that first flight, so yeah, as you are seeing, really impressive, and you could tell from, from the faces of, of the employees, and it's great to hear that you, are, you were one of them, that you really like, are like, a, like one big happy family. Uh, yeah, yeah, of, for all sure. Of you guys at Embraer. Good. So <laughs> nice. let's let's now move to the to the E two project. Obviously, as you mentioned, partly it's also your baby. <laughs> and and recently the E2 made the news with being certified for the steep approach specifically for for London City uh, Airport. So can you tell us a little bit more as it's about that as it's also your part of your market is also the the UK. Oh yeah sure. So uh, we just certified the steep approach for the 192. So the certification the ASA certification just got this in the end of May. Um, this will enable the uh, E192 customers to operate in London City. Um, this is a specific certification for London City Airport because uh, to operate there, the airplane is needed to do a specific procedure. So with an angle of 5.5 uh, degrees uh, during the, the um, uh, procedure uh, for the upper procedure right so um, these uh, in, in order to do that so we needed to do a lot of uh, flight test procedures we need to fly the, the airplane a lot we need to to get this data and also a lot of computational analysis in order to use this data to get the the certification so uh, uh, we it was about more than one year of working on that and uh, and we are really proud of achieving that in the middle of the pandemic uh, because uh, um, we we couldn't bring the airplane here to Europe for the flight tests, so we agreed to do these tests in Brazil in Gavião Peixoto, in one of the uh, factories of Embraer, where we have a huge uh, runway, and we could kind of, um, uh, let's say, simulate uh, London City uh, runway dimensions there, and we did all the, the flight tests there. Um, and London City, it's one of the uh, important airports here in Europe, right? So it's one of the busy, uh, busiest airports and one of the business um, airports here. It's a very important airport in London. And uh, today, if we take, I don't know, data from 2018 or even from today, day jets represents around 70% of the operations in London City Airport. And they choose the future. So the, it would be the future replacement for these uh, E190s and 170s that are already operating there. And uh, with the certification of the 192, uh, what I really like to say is that uh, we could increase the range of the operation. So comparing the 192 range with the 190E1 that's operated there, for example, um, we could almost double the range so, for instance, now the 192 uh, taking off from London City, you can achieve markets, for instance, you can achieve Moscow, Istanbul, um, Tel Aviv, Casablanca, wow. uh, markets that today you could not achieve with, uh, let's say, a single class configuration, full passengers uh, out of London City. So this can bring more um, airlines operating in London City airports. So this is good for the airport. So yeah, we're bringing more uh, airlines that could operate there now. And for the current airlines that are operating out of London City, you are bringing different markets. So it's um, in, in both ways. So uh, the, the airport is getting more customers. The airlines are uh, bringing more uh, markets. Um, and also we, we could achieve that also um, 
by uh, bringing more sustainability, let's say, um, uh, uh, we, we took into account sustainability in the development of day two. So this is part of day two DNA. So we could increase the range uh, out of London city, but also reducing the CO2 uh, um, emissions. So comparing the 192 with the 191, we reduced more than 17% to the CO2 emissions. Um, and it is not only about the CO2 emissions, so it's also about noise. So this cheap approach procedure in London City, actually it's not related to obstacles or to performance, it's related to noise emissions. So we needed to comply with this cheap approach procedure in order to generate less noise in the airport surroundings. And uh, day two, it's less than, C it, it is actually emitting less 60% of noise footprint um, in the uh, in the takeoff and engine procedure, so it's a huge improvement um, in uh, for the airport community living around there close to the London City Airport. So, and I'm I'm really proud to say about that and uh, to to have this kind of um, achievements for the for the two family. And uh, another thing that I would like to add actually is that uh, we have just certified the DO 92 right? And uh, we are now just working on the certification of the E1952 for the London City Airport operation. Um, uh, I, I cannot say yet uh, uh, when we, we expect to have this, but we are already working on it. And uh, the E1952 will be the bigger airplane. So with the higher capacity operating out of London City Airport. Yeah, I just wanted to say that it will be probably one of the biggest ones, and you already said it, that it will be the biggest one with, with the yes. biggest capacity. Yeah. yeah, and I already so many follow-up questions uh, on my mind. The, the first one, you, you mentioned um, the, the, uh, that, of course, E2 is much more efficient than, than the previous version. And I recently saw an article that our great partners at, at Simple Flying, and there was an interview with a representative of Helvetic Airways, uh, they obviously received recently that their E2, and they are they were saying that the real operations showed even bigger savings on on the fuel. So you were talking about seventeen percent, and their real life showed them that the the savings could even be up to twenty percent, which is really amazing. Yes, yes, it is true because when when you talk about the seventeen percent, and actually if I make the calcul the calculations accurately, it would be 17.3%, uh, but this will depend on the range. So here, when I talk about the 17%, so it would be around 600 nautical miles average range. So if you take into account um, different ranges, uh, this could bring uh, um, uh, I don't know, additional uh, improvements in terms of fuel burn. And also you need to take into account the airplane age. So depending on the age of the airplane that they, are, they, they were operating before, you can have this this is difference. So it, it, it is one of the examples that we can say that Embraer over delivers. So we, mm -hmm. really, we, we are not known to, to over promising, right? But we are over delivering. Amazing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's always great to, to surprise even the customer with, with over delivery, as you are saying exactly. Um, uh, let's uh, switch the topic a little bit from the, from the jets to the turboprops. So there okay. have been there have been some information that um, Embraer is on the way to develop its uh, its new turboprop uh, aircraft. So, what can you share with us about this project? <laughs> yeah, uh, I can share a little bit about it. So uh, I'm really excited about this project because it's nice. Uh, just for it. Uh, um, uh, to explain a little bit how it works, right? So we are now finishing that uh, we have just finished the development of the U192. We certified also the U195. We are working on a um, uh, more, let's say, optional things uh, for the two family, just like the London seats uh, certification and so on. We are working still on the certification of the U175. But in uh, just like the other OEMs, right? We are always looking for okay, what's gonna be next? And uh, we are, uh, we have our development um, engineering and that we are always looking to the markets and to the new technologies that would be available because the cycle of development 
development of a newer plane it takes a lot of time so we needed to take i don't know it's um it would be i don't know seven years but before these seven years five years of development and certification we have a lot of studies um behind and uh and you you need to think that as soon as they are playing is launched it will be operated for 15 20 years so we think it we need to think ahead um, about a market so what would be the market um, needs and how would be the market in terms of sustainability that's today is one of the main topics right how it's going to be the marketing 20 30 years uh, from now so this is what makes um, the um, airplane development so difficult but also um, I believe that's very um, exciting because you need to think about the different scenarios and so on. And then now, so as Embraer is about to finish day two developments with day 175 and two, we needed to think what about next. And then we are already talking to the media. So uh, the, there was a lot of news uh, since the beginning of the year or since last year about the development of a new family, a uh, new turboprop family. So the idea of this family is that we would have um, uh, airplanes in a segment of 70 seats and around 90 seats. So two, uh, two members in this family. And uh, uh, everybody asks us about the propulsion, right? Uh, so what would Embraer be doing about the propulsion? So at this moment, we are thinking about a traditional propulsion, uh, a traditional engine. So we are talking with different engine manufacturers. But uh, as I told you before, so as we needed to think about a product that will be launched, let's say, by the end of this decade, and that will be operated by, um, by 20, 30 years, we need to think about the future. So we are talking to our engineering, or we are thinking about ways to be able to upgrade um, the, this technology that would be launched as a traditional propulsion engine uh, to be able to incorporate... Uh, uh, future technologies, just like a, a hybrid electric, hydrogen, full electric in the in the medium future or the, the medium term, right? Uh, because we, we believe that these type of technologies are not available right now. Um, and uh, we need to, and we really need to, uh, we see a need for this product to be launched um, uh, in this decade. So we needed to think about these um uh kind of for these uh two types of um, solutions definitely fingers crossed uh, i cannot even imagine how complicated and complex project it is to develop a completely new aircraft so uh, fingers crossed for that project and uh, you mentioned a couple of times the sustainability so that leads me to my to my next question about um I know that you guys at Embraer in general are very passionate about sustainability. So what are, what are the, the features that you would highlight that on from which aspects are you looking at sustainability at Embraer? Okay, so sustainability was uh, is something that was our in our agenda. So the two family is one of the examples, right? So uh, we just delivered a, a uh, the two family just certified the 190 to the 1952 that brings about, let's say, more than 25% of fuel burn reductions and so CO2 reductions uh, per city. So it's a huge achievement. Uh, but now, um, with the COVID 19 pandemic, um, the sustainability is one of the trends that we believe that's, and I believe that this is something that all the aeronautical industry um, agrees that this is one of the trends that's being accelerated by the pandemic. Um, so you can see that uh, uh, that are mainly here in Europe, I believe, and also now in the US, uh, we have governments um, with uh, kind of interfering more in the aviation. So just like with these green taxes or um, imposing some, uh, let's say, some rules related to um, uh, airlines bailouts and so on, related also to emissions reductions and so on. Um, and we saw already uh, some airlines um, just uh, updating their targets related to the carbon neutral, uh, neutrality or CO2 emissions and so on. Um, and we as Embraer, uh, we are always uh, doing researches about different types of technology because just like I, I mentioned before, we needed to be ahead. So we needed to see what's going to be the new markets, um, trends, the new technologies in 10, 20, 30 years. So we are always working together with universities, not only in Brazil, but here in Europe, in the US, uh, about what could be this new technology. So 
uh, everybody is talking right now, it's in the media about electrification, hybrids, sustainable aviation fuel, hydrogen. So for sure, Embraer is looking to all of these um, areas. Um, and I like to say that we needed to have um, a short term, let's say, strategy, a medium term and a long term strategy. So we are pretty aligned with that. That. So just like the first one that I would like to say, it's the sustainable vision field. So uh, we are working together with um, engine ma manufacturers, together with our lines, just to see how we can improve that. Because today there are, there are planes, not only the, the E-Jets, but uh, um, there are planes from other OEMs, they are limited to 50%. Um, for to have this mix of sustainable aviation and fuel, right? Uh, so we needed to work in the future to have, to be able to carry 100% of sustainable aviation fuel. But uh, we need also to work together with the companies that produce the sustainable aviation fuel because today for all the airlines um, decide, so if it is available, so if we could carry 100% of sustainable aviation fuel, uh, there's no fuel um, available. So you need to scale up the production of the sustainable aviation fuels. So this is another part. And also, uh, um, uh, I believe that the, the, the third thing related to the sustainable aviation fuels is the costs. Because today, comparing the costs of the sustainable aviation fuels with the traditional fuels, right, they, um, they, they are much higher. So I think that the whole industry needs to work together on these three main pillars related to the sustainable aviation fuels. So in order to be able to carry up to 100%, uh, working on reduction of costs of sustainable aviation fuel and scale up um, the production of the SAFs. Uh, then for the medium term strategy, so uh, we could be, well, we are researching and we are working on things just like the new turboprop. So we are thinking about uh, having hybrid, hybrid electric um, you know, implementation. So we are looking at carbon offset strategies together with airlines and uh, uh, and when we think about aviation, I like to say that I, it's not only about the operation of the airplanes, right? So we are not looking at Embraer only to the airline side on the, uh, from the uh, operation, the taxi, takeoff, landing. Uh, we are looking also at the production um, side of the, the airplane. So how we could have a greener uh, production. So today we have implemented um, a few uh, modifications in the production of day two, for instance. So our painting cabin is, uh, well, we are using, for instance, solar energy. Um, in terms of materials, uh, we, when we were um, uh, looking to the E2 production cycle, we were looking to ways of, okay, in the future, if we have to uh, disassemble the airplane, uh, how could we um, use uh, about 100% of the parts? So just like how we could recycle most part of the, the airplane. So we are looking um, at the full, uh, let's say, uh, cycle and not only to the operation of the, the aircraft itself. And then we come to the long-term strategy that when we will be talking about the hydrogen uh, propulsion or full electric propulsion, uh, because today in the segment that Embraer operates, so if you take a look at the commercial aviation, that's more than 50 seats, uh, we think that this type of technology won't be mature enough um, in the next 10 years, let's say. So it's not, um, I don't think that we will have 100 seats um, uh, um, airplane operating full uh, hydrogen or full electric by the end of this decade. Uh, but for sure, we will have the small airplanes. So we see a lot of initiatives um, around Europe. We have initiatives at Embraer also. So we have just like EVE, uh, that's the, the EVE tall, uh, that will be fully um, electric. So, and I really believe that these technologies being uh, tested and um, let's say uh, we can achieve a mature in these smaller airplanes, and then in the uh, medium long term future, we can um, apply these uh, technologies in the, in the bigger airplanes. Um, another project that, that we are working on in Embraer House is the Ipanema. Ipanema is the uh, agricultural airplane that we have. So it is already um, uh, able to fly with uh, full ethanol. Um, and uh, we are working on it since last year uh, to implement um, uh, full electric operation. So the idea is to have the Daypanem flying 
in this full um, electric version uh, this year. So we are working on different uh, types of uh, development. So we are testing different types of technologies in order to, uh, to have these technologies mature enough in, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years to be able to implement this, let's see, in the turboprop in the future. Yeah, of course. And um, I wanted to ask you the easy question, whether you think what's the future of the aviation propulsion, whether it's hydrogen or electric, but I think you have covered that very, very <laughs> diplomatically already. So I'm not going to ask you that. Uh, thank you very much, Juliana, for your time today and for sharing with us all the exciting news and all the projects you are, you are working on within Embraer. Last question before we say goodbye, uh, as I, which I always ask at the very end of my interviews, what do you love the most about aviation? What I love the most, I think it's, it's really difficult to say that, but what I love the most, I think that's the people. Uh, I really like to know different, uh, different people, people in, um, uh, involved in the airline industry. So let's say from airlines, um, uh, or airports, uh, just like you from uh, Aviadev. And uh, I don't know, I think that uh, because in the aviation industry, we have all the types of passionate people, right? So it's a, it's a small community. It's not a huge community, but I think that we are all really passionate about aviation. And this, I think that this would be my favorite part. I totally agree with that. And the previous guest I had on the podcast, Nick Ashton from Duhop, he said exactly the same answer, people, <laughs> was what he okay. said. So, so that makes uh, not two, but three of us already that we can, we can agree on that. Thanks again, Juliana. All the best and hope to see you soon, hopefully also in person someday. Okay, great. Agreed. Thank take, you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.